Hello and welcome. This is the little Elna Lotus and today I'm going to explore this little switch here on the end of the machine. If we have a look at the service manual here, here are the different class types here. So you've got the EC is class 15, ZZ which is class 25, SP class 35 and TSP class 36 and stamped on the side of the machine you'll see that number you've got your voltage you know for um, your region so we're 230 240 volt 50 watt motor 15 watt bulb type 35 and there's the serial number there so that's the little tag on the side of the machine there and that's quite handy for model identification so if we have a look at the switch here We've got a little indicator here on the left and you can see that we've got a zero which basically means no operation so this is like a transportation slash storage mode so what that does is it puts the the motor in between uh, and disconnects the drive on the hand wheel and also disconnects the drive on the bobbin winder here and I, I get a few questions about the, the bobbin winders and, and I think sometimes it could be related to you know this switch here so it sort of it prompted me to sort of explore this a little bit more now um, in the transport slash storage mode the hand wheel is also locked so if we have a look at the machine here we'll see that the take up lever here is in its upper position and that is where the machines are locked for transportation if we for instance you know had turned the machine slightly and taken it out of that position where the take-up levers at the top and then engaged the storage mode slash transport mode hand wheel turns but it will only turn until it gets to the top here the take-up lever and then it clicks in to a little slot on the hand wheel and locks it. So quite good for um, you know storage and transportation. I mean th these machines are ultra portable. They're lightweight, you know, uh, compact, designed for carrying around and transporting. So quite a good feature there. And the other thing about the storage mode is that if the um, motor pulley, and we'll get in and take a wee look at that in a second, is um, if the motor pulley is resting constantly against the flywheel here, like in stitching mode, the, the pulley presses against the flywheel and can, if it's stored for a long time, can uh, a flat can form on the actual pulley. And this is seen in some of the earlier models, likes of the Elna Supermatic and I've done a video on the Elna Supermatic and this problem with the pulley also um, how to replace that pulley and um, they obviously identified that as a problem and rectified it by giving you this option to put it into the storage mode here so quite handy if we go around to the stitching mode here with the indicated by the three little stitches there well that actually puts the machine into your normal sewing mode so if I put my foot down, and you'll see the machine goes into sewing mode there. So that's that's what you'd use for normal sort of operation. When you finish sewing, and um, you know if you're going to be storing the machine for a little while, it would pay to switch that back to the storage transportation mode there. Now if we go one step further, so that this little bobbin symbol. Is lining up with the indicator here that's bobbin winding mode and what that does is it drives the bobbin winder here you'll notice also that the the hand wheels not turning but if you manually turn the hand wheel you'll see that the machine will turn over as normal so what that means is the the hand wheels you know permanently connected to the workings of the machine but in this position here with the bobbin winding position the motors disengage from the hand wheel 
and has come across and is now driving the bob and winder mechanism. So I sort of, I sort of wonder sometimes if people are having trouble with the bob and winder whether they don't have this in the right position. So when we're in the storage mode or the stitching mode you should be able to freely turn the bob and winder shaft uh, because it's actually not being driven at all in either of those two modes, storage and stitching, it's free to move. But when we turn over to the bobbin winding mode, now the bobbin winder is actually engaged with the uh, motor pulley and it is a lot stiffer. You can turn it, but it's very stiff. So that might be a good way to test whether the bobbin winder is actually seized or not. You should be able to turn the bobbin winder. When it's in bobbin winder mode, it's quite stiff. You should be able to turn it though. That's actually turning the motor as well when I do that. And in stitch or storage mode, that should turn that should turn very freely because it's disengaged. So that, that's quite a good um, you know little troubleshooting procedure for checking whether that bob and winder's in a in a healthy state as far as the uh, the bearings and whatnot uh, go. Now let's take a wee look in in the machine here. Now you know if you ever do get into the side of the machine just make sure 100% sure you unplug the machine uh, because there's live components back in here. Okay we'll start by removing these. These are posi drive slightly different to your standard Phillips. And this is a standard Phillips screw on the end, so standard Phillips screwdriver. Just hold back on, hold the wheel, stop it from turning, and undo that screw. Now that should all just pull, pull out like that. Easy as that. So here we have the, this is the hand wheel here, okay, and motor, drive pulley. So this is the part that spins, the, the motor here, drives this drive pulley here. And we're in storage mode at the moment. So you can see there's a, there's a gap in here I can pass this tool in between. So the motor's disengaged from the from the hand wheel here. And if we take a look here, this is where the you know the motor, the whole assembly goes in here. So this this side of the pulley will contact this side of the bobbin winder here. So there's a uh, couple of bearings in there. This shaft here leads up to the to the bobbin winder here. So there's a, a bearing here at the top so if that is tight or seized you know get oil into there top top bearing and the bottom bearing down here as well. I wouldn't go uh, putting too much oil around this area you don't want it sort of dripping off and coming down onto this little cage here bobbin winder wheel um, and you know potentially getting onto the onto the motor and uh, you don't want oil around this area so be very careful just you know a very small amount of oil on those bearings if need be. So basically the drive pulley here is like the meat in the sandwich uh, you know it's between this pulley here and this drive wheel here and when it's in storage no mode uh, it's in between the two with clearance between both so it's not driving so the motor will just spin uh, without driving this wheel or this wheel here. So in the transportation mode you'll see there's a, a cam here with, with a little follower here but when you put it into storage mode it allows this lever here which you can't quite see at the moment to lock into this slot here and that's what locks the machine. So if I bring that around it actually clicks in and locks and I'll take this hand wheel out so we get a better look at that soon. 
So yeah, in transportation mode, we've got some clearance on this side of the pulley between the hand wheel and the pulley, motor pulley, and also there'll be clearance between the motor pulley and the bobbin winder inside the machine. So if we go into stitching mode, you'll see the motor comes closer and contacts the hand wheel. So that's actually driving the hand wheel there. It's a bit wobbly because the hand wheel, you know, normally sits on the shaft and is held securely. But that gives you an idea of what this is actually doing. So if we go from stitching mode out to bobbin winding, you can see the motor moving out towards the where the bobbin winder ring would be here. So that's bobbin winding, drive and storage. So if we want to take a better look at what's going on in here we can probably get this uh, hand wheel out here. I just like that. You can see the little locking notch there and it's this little lever here, a little point of that lever there that locks into that little slot there. And so when we're in storage mode, you'll see this little lever will be protruding. And you'll see that move back when we go into sewing mode. So it's disengaging the hand wheel from its locking position. Now the motor position is determined by this cam here. Get a closer look at that. So we're in stitching, uh, no, we're in lock position there at the moment. So if we come uh, to the stitching position, you'll see that the cam allows the motor to move towards the wheel there, the hand wheel. And if we keep going to bobbin winding position, you'll see the cam will force the motor back the other way out towards the bobbin winder, like that. So that's bobbin winding, stitching and storage. Now these motor pulleys can be replaced. Um, th these pulleys seem, I don't see that many of these with uh, flat spots in them. But yeah, they, they can be replaced if need be. And the other thing to check is just that the, you know, this surface on the hand wheel here, that's the other side of the hand wheel, that surface there, make sure that's really clean and smooth, should be smooth. Let's put that back in there. Install this. Just like so. So the hand wheel goes onto the shaft here. You'll see a roll pin down in here. See so that's the roll pin there. And that lines up with this slot here on the hand wheel. So the shaft goes through the hole here and the roll pin sits across in this slot here. Now there's two ways you can put this on, obviously, you can get that 180 degrees out. Uh, but the key here is really just make sure that the take-up lever is near the top there. And that way you know that the, the little groove here for the locking goes to the bottom. And that should just line up with the roll pin there. So the hand wheel just goes onto the shaft there. Just ease that in. And if we want to check that, just make sure the take-up lever is at the top position there. And put the machine into the transportation mode there. And the wheel should lock. Just make sure you push it right in, because we don't have the screw here. Just push that right in. And that's locked there. And the take-up lever is at the top. So that's that's where you want to see it. So then you can, once you've confirmed that, you can just go ahead and put the screw back in. Just like that, and then get our other screws. So I've just plugged everything back up there, and you'll also notice down here there's an on off switch, but that's really just for the bulb. So you've got uh, that's the bulb off position. You can hear if I put my foot down, the motor's still driving. And there we've got the 
bulb on position. So that switch is solely for the bulb. It does not affect the motor. So to check that the um, that this switch is set properly, so what you do is you run the machine. Now nothing's driving. The motor's in idle mode. It's just spinning by itself. If you turn this until the bobbin winder starts to turn, so that's that position there. When that starts to happen, so now that the bobbin winder is actually just starting to drive, this here should be between position 10:30, so about this angle, and 12 o'clock. So it's it's not quite at 12 and it's after 10.30 so that's within specification you know if you had to turn it right around here before the bobbin winder started to uh, drive well then there's an adjustment that needs to be made yeah so that there is adjusting screws here just for um, setting that correctly and if it if it drives starts to drive too soon so if it's you know that's nine o'clock let's say it's say 10 or 9.30 or somewhere around there if the bobbin winder starts to drive there well then it's coming in too soon so you know the adjustments out as well so as long as it's between say 10.30 and 12 that that bobbin winder starts to engage that's fine so I'll show you what I'm doing there I'm turning so I'm going to turn this gradually as I uh, put my foot down I'll show you what happens with the bobbin winder so I've got my foot down on the foot controller, you can hear the motor motor spinning there. Now I'm turning, I'm going to turn the knob slowly in the clockwise direction, so we're coming up to about 9.30, 10, 10.30, 11, 11.30, and it's, you can see the bottom line is just starting to turn there. And that's the point that you want to look at this here. And as I say, if that's between 10.30 and 12 o'clock, that's within spec. Yeah, so that's the, the mysteries of this switch here explained. And I hope you found that helpful. And thank you very much for watching.